What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Cly, and it's time for a little DIY. With this being the third DIY fidget spinner video on this channel, and to celebrate 3,000 subscribers, I have decided to make three different fidget spinners in this video. Well, okay, not so much three different fidget spinners. They're all going to be made with the exact same material, that material being hot glue sticks, but I'm going to be using three different techniques. I really have no segue, so let's jump into the first. Okay, so the items you're going to need for every single build today are hot glue, of course, a set of bearings, a sheet of parchment paper, because it's really nice to have underneath your hot glue since it doesn't really adhere to it, and a hot glue gun. In this case, I'm using my girlfriend's hot glue gun because mine got lost in the moving shuffle. I want to go ahead and point out, if you're going to be using hot glue for any considerable amount of projects, invest $3 in a hot glue gun. They are not expensive, you only need the bare bones model, and it's a lot safer than the lighter method I've been seeing on YouTube. Okay, so for this first one, all I'm really going to be doing is gluing the bearings to each other. I mean, it, it's really that simple. Just basically line them up so that they look pretty, yeah, there we go, pretty balanced. This is going to be ugly, but easy. Move a few things out of the way. Get a little dab of hot glue right on there. Not doing too much to start. And press. Just continue all the way around. Try to keep them pretty balanced. There we go. Ooh. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. There we go. A little bit off, but oh, there we go. I'll just do this. Notice how easily it pops off. That's why this is not going to be the main attraction for the day. But already done. If you want, you actually could just go around, do a little bit of reinforcement around the edges. As such, looks like my hot glue is starting to run low. And like I said, not pretty, but effective. Also, be careful not to get it on your fingers like I just did, since this stuff is a bit like napalm. Let's just reload. There we go. So be careful. If you need to, use adult supervision while doing this if you're younger. There we go all the way around. I think I'm just going to come back when I'm done with this. And there we go. Like I said. Ugly, yet effective. I'm not really opposed to this one, but I think it's too simple. I want to do something better. So let's just harvest my bearings. That's the thing with hot glue. It really, while it does have a good tack at the start, if you put just a little bit of effort into it, you can get it right off of metal. So let me go ahead and just strip these bearings and get ready for the next project. Yeah, that took no time at all to strip. That's why I feel like we need a wee bit more reinforcement. So, on to the next one. For that, I'm just going to flip over this piece of parchment paper and voila! This is an outline that I made using the same template from the DIY Dollar Tree fidget spinner video. And I'm glad I still have the sheet of parchment paper I used for my prototype because my Templates kind of vanished. So that's why it's not appearing in this video. If you want a better look at that one, check out this little guy's video, because a lot of people have. Anyway, what I'm going to have to do is stick one of my bearings on each of those dots, centered up as much as possible, and let's just go ahead and get a bead of hot glue at the edge, get it pretty centered. There we go. I'm just gonna let that cool lock it into place and do the same with the others there we go I know some of you are probably wondering what the heck I'm doing it will all make sense in a second there we go and four 
Yeah, that looks pretty balanced. What do you say? Oh, this guy is actually quite off-center. That's what I get for not using my camera. Doesn't matter. It'll work. It'll work. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace around each of these using the hot glue gun, build up a couple layers of glue, and that will make a spinner, or well, at least a rough one. So I will be back when that is done. And there we go. I built up two layers of hot glue and I've gone ahead and peeled it off the sheet. So it's nice and easy to take off. Yay. This one will actually survive a drop and not pop out the bearings. Though, if you wanted to using the same principle as earlier, it's actually really easy to get your bearings back out with just a little bit of effort. But unlike last time, you're actually able to put them right back in and they hold just fine. Now, if you want to smooth out the sides, you've got a couple of options. You can either use the barrel of the hot glue gun as a bit of a heat tool just to smooth things out a bit. You can do the same thing using a hot knife or a soldering iron. Just be careful with the molten glue there. And it's actually really easy to carve with a utility knife or box cutter. I would suggest not using a ooh, Dremel. Like I said, it can take a drop. But as I was saying, I would suggest not using a rotary tool, be it Dremel or other brand, to take off excess material just because the friction will end up gumming up your tool. I've tried it. It worked, but it wasn't pretty. Needless to say, I had to throw away the grinding head I used on that project. But that being said, I actually really like this end result, even though it's not the prettiest thing in the world. That brings us to version number three. And for that, we're gonna need a few extra things. I'll be right back. I wanna go ahead and point out before we get started that this version of a DIY fidget spinner does require you to have access to an existing spinner. Kinda like this little guy right here. This is the outer housing of the LED fidget spinner that I bought at 7-Eleven and subsequently reviewed. Go ahead and pop up a video right about now. Anyway, back on topic. If you have a friend or family member that is kind enough to let you borrow their spinner, please return it to them in one piece and in a timely fashion after you're done with it. Don't worry, you're not gonna be altering it or anything. What you are going to be doing is using it to make a mold. And that's why I've pulled the bearings out because I'm just making the housing. If you can't pull the bearings, please cover them with uh, some masking tape or something just because you don't want to gum up a nice bearing. Take good care of it, please. I think I've said please enough, so let's move on to the next part. What I'm going to be using to make the mold is what the DIY community calls ugu. And ugu is a word I just love saying. All it is is a bit of cornstarch and some 100% silicone caulk. Oh, and bonus tip, if you do not want your caulk drying up and you don't have one of those fancy tips, which admittedly I've never had good luck with anyway, a little bit of foil, be it aluminum or tin foil, and a rubber band makes a beautiful cap. So all you do, or let me just pull that off, is take a little bit of your silicone caulk. I'm gonna squirt it into this cup right here. I don't need too much because I'm not actually doing the spinner proper for this. I'm going to be making a mold of the caps just to show you. There we go. A couple squirts will do it. Pull out right there. Recap so that I don't dry up. And add about the exact same amount. So I like to do a one to one of cornstarch. There we go. One. And there we go, that's about right. I'm going to mix this up really quickly and I'll be right back. And there we go. Nice and clay-like. I wanna go ahead and say using the 100% silicone is going to put off a few fumes, so don't breathe directly over the cup. Even better, wear a face mask. This stuff will make you gag and if I sound a little short of breath, that's because I'm being an idiot and not using a face mask. So I have a limited window here. I need to add the last ingredient, which is a couple of drops of acrylic paint. This is going to just make 
identifying whether or not it's been thoroughly mixed much easier. And because it's adding moisture to the silicone, which is how it activates, it's going to be what makes our mold set up. So let's just add this in here, mix it in, get some gloves, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm an idiot. I grabbed the wrong kind of gloves while at the store today, and so I'm doing this barehanded. Not exactly an ideal situation, but fortunately for me, I haven't had any kind of allergic reaction when doing this in the past. But don't go with my example. Take safety precautions. You might not be as lucky as I am when it comes to skin chemistry. So yeah, anyway, I got the red paint sort of mixed in to a superficial level and now I am just working it the rest of the way. I'm gonna keep rolling this dough ball into basically a hot dog shape, folding it back on itself and repeating the process. I do this with all kinds of different putties that are two part and it seems to do a good job mixing everything up thoroughly. So let's just keep working at it. Just about got it to where I need it to be. Get it into a nice dough ball here. Yeah, that looks right. That's a nice pink color. There's my cap right there. And we bring it down. It will stick to you a bit. Even if you're wearing gloves, it will stick. So you just want to get everything nice and centered. And I like to work it back just in case I've introduced an air bubble when I was flattening things out. There we are. Trying not to block the lighting too much. I've got things set up a little bit differently. I've got a light there and a light over here versus the two I had from the back. So hopefully this will make things easier. And hopefully you just learned a nice cheap way to make a silicone mold because Silicone mold making materials are not cheap. Ugu is one of the best I've found, with the only real downside being that it's not boot safe. So while I can use this mold for all kinds of materials, chocolate or anything else that I intend on eating is not one of them. So I'm gonna set this aside and bring out a proper tri-spinner mold. This is one I made previously, as you can tell. And let's just go ahead and jump right into using it. There we go. To put your hot glue into this mold, you've got two different methods. You can either melt the glue ahead of time in a pot in an oven or on a low temperature cooker. I have a hot plate in my garage for just such an occasion and for melting pewter or you can just inject it straight in, which admittedly, while it has its imperfections, I've had a better experience with. So let's just go ahead and work it around the mold and I will be right back. The mold is nice and full. I've given it time to cool down. Well, not all the way, so it's gonna be a little bit of flexy, but at the same time, that kind of makes it easier to pull out of the mold. So let's just go ahead and tug. There we go. And we're left with a very nice dry spinner. It's still a bit soft, so letting it cool down some more will get it nice and rigid. However, at the same time, it looked pretty close. On the back here, you're gonna have a bit of flash from outside of the mold, and that can be cleaned up with a blade or the edge of your glue gun. Oh goodness, I got it. There we go. Let's just get that off. So if I wanted to, I could just pull my bearings out of my previous spinner right here and load them up. So let's just do that. That I will not be doing a spin test on this one as of yet, or any of these as of yet, just because I kind of gummed up that bearing. So I need to clean it out properly. There we go. But, oh goodness, this is why you let them cool. Or if you want to just put a dab of hot glue, you know, I'm gonna do that. Dab of hot glue right there. That's what I get for not letting it cool down. I'll make it stay. I'll put it in from this side. That way I don't mess up the front. There we go, nice and snug. Much better. 
like I said, if I let it cool down, it will stay so much better. But it still looks really good, and that's a homemade spinner right there. Also, it has one extra really neat effect. Let me move this out of the way. Because it's translucent, I can take this laser pointer right here. See if it'll show up on camera. Yep. I do apologize for the neighbor who has decided to start cutting their grass. But as you can see, it has a nice light up effect. I'm tempted to use this technique to make a spinner that I will put LEDs in with a changeable battery so that it's a wee bit better than the 7-Eleven one that this body came from. And I can just have a nice, cool, full spinner glow. I can make as many of these as I want, which is really nice. So what I'm going to do is in my free time, I'm going to make, oh, 10, 10 or so of these for another video later on this week where I will be doing multiple styles of customization. I'll be doing the much requested hydro dip that everybody and their next door neighbor loves doing on fidget spinners. And I'm gonna be coming up with some unique paint designs. So look forward to that if I can get everything together. It'll maybe be coming later on this week, if not next week. And until next time, this is your guy, Cly. Signing off.